welcome to a very autumnal vlog. This is going to be my Adventures Through Wonderland reading vlog. So it's going to be a vlog filled with lots and lots of autumnal things and lots and lots of middle grade. I started off today with such a nice walk outside. I went with my family and we went to this really, really beautiful half hiking, half park place. It's really, really pretty. There are so many leaves. So there are gonna be so many things that we are going to do. I'm really excited because we're going to make some apple pie together. I'm going to attempt to make a jack-o'-lantern. I have a huge stack of middle grades right next to me. Most of these were on my original TBR, but some I've added, and I do not expect to get through all of these. I expect to get through maybe three of these or four of these because the honest truth is grad school this year is very hard. I am in a couple of classes that that are taking a lot of focus. I find archival practices to be so interesting, but also the reading material is so dense. I'm trying really hard to memorize all of the different methods that goes into archival processes and it's a lot of information basically. And then my other class this year is information and technology. And I'm just gonna be honest, even though I do YouTube, technology goes way over my head. Like I'm a very old fashioned person. I love fountain pens and I love like dark academia. I love physical books. And so everything that we're talking about is so hard for me to comprehend. And I have to take very tedious notes and study a lot outside of class just to feel like I kind of understand what my professor is saying. So I just have like a little bit less time than I thought for the month of September to dedicate to reading. Um, so this is now officially going to be like a mood TBR. If you want more information on each book, I will leave my original TBR somewhere so that you can kind of see. But I've got For Vengeance and Valor. Then I've got Night Books. Then we've got Thieves of Weirdwood. The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making. Unnatural Creatures, an anthology curated by Neil Gaiman. The Strange World's Travel Agency. The Ghouls of Howl Fair. This one is new. It's A Monster Calls, but I think I actually want to make this more of a priority because I'm very much in the mood for some monster books. And then the final one and the most important one is The Train to Impossible Places by P.G. Bell. This is very, very important because I'm actually going to be interviewing P.G. Bell along with Gavin, Jade, and Kaylin. He's going to be at our live show, and so I really want to give his book the time and attention that it deserves. I have to say, too, this is one of the best middle grades I've ever read. I'm halfway through. This is definitely a top, top, top priority. But yeah, so I don't know if you can tell. It was sunnier earlier when I was walking, but it has become a very gray and blustery, cold, chilly autumn day. So today I thought I would have like a nice, easy, fun day of reading indoors, drinking coffee and tea, but also I thought it might be kind of fun to go to a bookstore. So today we are also going to be going to the bookstore to see what kind of autumnal new reads are out and then basically just having a very casual day at home reading. I think I also might kind of go out of order on the map. Let's pull up the map super quick. So on the map, if you go a couple of prompts down, there is eat me, drink me, and it is make yourself a cozy snack for a cozy night in. And I think actually I might skip around the map a little bit and do that one tonight. I got these really, really good little snacks. I didn't make them, but I will like put them together. And they're like these little sour pumpkins. I get them every single year from my local grocery store. And I think I'm going to watch over the garden wall and have like some nice cider or something tonight and eat those and just have like the coziest night in ever. So I'm going to definitely cross that one off the list. But anyways, I think that's it for the update now, you guys. So let's go ahead and go to a couple bookstores and enjoy this cozy and chilly autumn weather. <laughs> let's go.
you guys. So I'm in the uh, parking lot right now of Barnes & Noble. Sorry if my lipstick at all is messed up. Whenever I, I wear my cloth masks, like it just ob obviously like smears and stuff, so <laughs> sorry. I thought I would just show you a little mini haul of what I got. So the first thing that I got was $10, which is kind of expensive for a used book, but I figured like, why not? I only ended up buying one used book from the used bookstore and it was The Boy Who Drew Monsters. And this is considered literary horror. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know anything about horror, so I had no idea that you could have literary horror. That sounds so fascinating to me. But anyways, this book is about a boy who has like a near death experience while drowning and then when he comes back he's terrified of monsters and so he just decides to draw all of them. I guess what happens is like reality and his fantasy start to blur and I think his monsters come to life. I don't know. I don't know if it's like all in his mind or if this is really happening but this is like a psychological horror and honestly it just sounds really really good so I thought I would splurge. This is adult by the way. Then I had a whole bag. <laughs> the first book is an aesthetics only buy and that is Frankenstein. And this of course is by Mary Shelley. I really, really wanted to get this because I thought that the cover was so beautiful. I actually really, really wanna read this in October. But this specific one was really cool because it has an introduction by Stephen King and it's got some chronology and a couple of other things in here. So it's really interesting, but also it comes with these beautiful black and white illustrations and everything about it just seemed really aesthetic and like lovely. And so I thought this would be such a fun book to read on a spooky October day with a nice, I don't know, cup of hot coffee. The next one I got, I purchased because my friend Soleil told me about it and she told me that she was going to be reading These Violent Delights. And that's all I know about it. She just, she said that it sounded really good. She said that it was like dark academia. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get it. I don't know anything about it other than the fact that Soleil told me to buy it and that it is a dark academia novel. So there you go. And then finally, I got two YA ghost stories. So the first one is Prelude for Lost Souls. And I was immediately drawn in with the most beautiful cover I've ever seen. Look at that. It's like a work of art. And then the back says, every town has a story. This town has a ghost story. Um, so living for that. You guys know I love a good ghost story. I don't know if you guys knew this, but I'm actually writing a middle grade ghost story. I've always loved ghost stories. I actually did a vlog last year all about ghost stories. I kind of want to do a vlog dedicated to ghost stories as well. So that was that for the ghost stories. And then the final one I got was Horrid by Katrina Leno. Of course, I heard about this book through Kayla down from Books and Lala. I love her channel. I saw her haul this and I've been really wanting to read this for a while. I don't know a ton other than it's by Katrina Leno, who's one of my favorite authors. Her writing is stunning, but also it's a ghost story. But yeah, Katrina Leno actually wrote one of my very favorite books of all time, and that was Summer of Salt. So I have a lot of confidence in her writing specifically and then I heard it was a ghost story and I was like you know what let's just I don't need anything else like Kayla mentioned it uh, this is one of my favorite authors and it's a ghost story like who cares what it's about like at this point you know what I'm saying like it's a five out of five for me so that is it for now I need to do a couple of things tonight one is I need to work on a paper that is due in like four days but I kind of want to turn it in early meaning I wanted to turn it in tomorrow it's half done so I need to finish it I really don't think it's gonna take me very long but I really need to focus and like work on it but then I think I am going to settle in for a nice cozy night of watching over the garden wall and then potentially reading a little bit tonight. So that is my plan. We're going to watch Over the Garden Wall. We're going to read a little bit and we are going to study. So I think that is it. Uh, let's get our butts home. <laughs>
uh, actually a couple of days have passed since the last time that I have vlogged. So the live show already happened and it was so much fun. We ended up chatting with PG Bell who was such a natural on camera. He was so kind, so funny and so lovely. And I learned so much more about the train to impossible places that I didn't know before. For example, he actually said that it started as a bedtime story to his son, which was amazing to hear about. I also had so much fun playing games. We played games with PG Bell, but then we also played games, just the four of us hosts. And it was so much fun. We played one of my favorite games to play in person called Nouns in a Bucket. And I wasn't sure how it would work in a live show, but thankfully people were so kind about it and everybody really loved it, especially Gavin's performance, which was hilarious. But yeah, so that was that. I can go ahead and link the live show down below if you are interested. But let me show you the books that I did manage to read in that time. And then I'm gonna show you the book that I will be reading for the next couple of days because I feel like I wanna keep reading middle grade even though the readathon is over with. So I'm just gonna do it anyways. <laughs> so I ended up finishing three books. The first one obviously is The Train to Impossible Places by P.G. Bell. This was so fantastic and so whimsical. I give this a five out of five stars. I thought that it was absolutely perfect. Again, this is about a little girl named Susie and Susie is a very practical little girl. She's all about logic. And so one day when something magical happens and a train appears out of nowhere, she has to figure out the logistics behind it. More from like a scientific mind than like a curiosity or like adventurous, I believe in magic sort of mind, which I thought was really a great twist on like the chosen one and kind of like this um, fantastical story in middle grade. So I just, I thought that the blending of science and magic was done so spectacularly. I really enjoyed it a lot. Definitely a fantasy, it's not like a sci-fi, but I just, I loved it so much and I, I could not recommend this book more. The next book that I read was the Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making, and this is by Catherine M. Valente. This book was so incredibly atmospheric. I really, really enjoyed reading it, that is for sure. It was very reminiscent of like an old Victorian fairy tale. So if you loved Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, you will love this. But also likewise, if you hated how nonsensical and sort of meandering that plot was, you are not going to like this book. I wouldn't recommend this book. For me, I enjoyed avoid all of the atmosphere. And in fact, I feel like the people who should read this are the people who want atmosphere and atmospheric middle grade reads because this will totally transport you. However, I will say surprisingly that there were parts of the book that I didn't understand and I had to keep rereading because it was so nonsensical and almost too whimsical for my brain. It, it almost felt like a secret code that only children could understand. And I, as an adult looking into this, could not understand it. Having said that, I feel like this is a very like advanced middle grade because the vocabulary is quite extensive. I don't think that it is too hard for middle grade at all, but just know going into this that this is going to be a middle grade I think a lot of adults are going to appreciate. And a lot of um, kids who read this are going to love this who really bond with like classic fairy tales and things. Highly recommend this one though, I really enjoyed it. Specifically, I highly enjoyed the autumn section. There is a section when our main protagonist, September, goes to a part of fairyland where it's just autumn all the time and it was so magical to read it during the month of September. I really enjoyed it. It's just about a little girl named September who goes off to fairyland to try to save it and I really, really loved it. And then the final book that I have here is Night Books by J.A. White, and I really enjoyed this one as well. This is all about a kid named Alex, and Alex wants to be a writer, and he loves creepy, weird things like monsters and ghosts, and honestly, I sort of felt like I was reading about myself. <laughs> It was really, really fantastic. Alex feels kind of like an outcast at school because no one else can relate to loving these creepy, weird monster things. And so he decides one night to burn all of his books and to not want to be a writer. And on the way to burn these books, he is kidnapped by a witch. And the only way that he can kind of survive is by feeding this witch scary stories every single night and keeping her entertained. And it was just really great. I thought it was really great. Very atmospheric, very cool. The witch's apartment was really, really neat. I really enjoyed 
like the setup. I highly recommend if you're looking for a spooky middle grade read. So I have so many middle grades that I really wanna to get to that are now going to spill over to October and a ton that I am in the middle of right now. But the two that I am going to be focusing on for the next couple of days are A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness and For Vengeance and Valor by Ali Carter. This one I'm going to be listening to the audiobook I think tomorrow while I am carving pumpkins possibly, just because I'm really enjoying the audiobook and I'm pretty far along. So yes. And then the other one that I will be physically reading is When a Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. And this is less about monsters and more about grief. Our main protagonist, Connor, is struggling with basically figuring out how he feels or his grief when his mother gets very, very sick. And I think that this comes in the form of a monster who visits him. So I'm really excited. I've been wanting to read this for a really long time. And it looks so atmospheric with all of the pictures as well. Here is a picture. Today is gonna to be a really fun day because today I will finally be baking an apple pie. I've been wanting to bake an apple pie for a really long time. And this particular apple pie is really cool because instead of doing like a traditional crust, it's gonna have like a crumble on top, which is cool because it's kind of like a combination between an apple crumble and an apple pie. And I've just been really craving all things apple pie. <laughs> I think that's the plan. So I think what I'm gonna do is put on Gilmore Girls and kind of watch that while I bake and then afterwards tackle this guy. So you ready? Let's go. Wait, where's my coffee? Hello, and uh, welcome to the final day, I guess, of the vlog. So, in a shocking turn of events, I actually finished the entire book in one sitting, and I loved it. Like, I wasn't shocked that I would love it. I was just surprised <laughs> that I read the whole thing in one sitting. It shouldn't really be that much of a surprise, though, because it's actually a fairly short book, and like half of it are illustrations, and it was beautiful. If you were looking for a book that tackles really hard topics like grief, sadness, guilt, sickness, like that is your book. It was such a beautiful and amazing book. I loved When a Monster Calls so much and I can't wait to watch the movie, which I think I'm gonna do tonight. Mm. But today to wrap up the festivities, I've got a pumpkin pal. Originally, I was actually going to, wow, this thing is massive. Look at it compared to the size of my face. So I was originally going to carve this, but then I was like, uh, why bother? when I can paint it. I found a couple designs online. I take credit for nothing. I am not original. This is not a Disney Channel original movie here. Some monster ones, some Frankenstein ones. I kind of want to do the Frankenstein one. So that is what we will be doing. And while, I'm sorry that I'm caressing you. While I am painting this beautiful pumpkin, I figured I would do a fall this or that. We kind of did this with PG Bell. 
and I just think that it's really fun. But I won't be doing rapid fire. I'll be like really thinking out my this or that. If you've never done this or that, it's just asking, do you prefer this thing or that thing? But I wanna do a fall themed one. Okay. Ooh, BuzzFeed has something. Okay, it says play a fall themed game of this or that and we'll guess your current mood. Okay, this or that, pumpkin muffins or pumpkin scones? Pumpkin muffins because they're a little softer and when they come right out of the oven, they taste so good. Starts with green. You're looking good. Oh, maybe I shouldn't use a sponge because won't it like soak it up? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> now that looks worse. Okay. Lovely, you look beautiful. This or that, pumpkin pie or apple pie? I mean, I feel like I'm gonna offend the pumpkin if I say anything other than pumpkin pie, but probably apple pie because I really like apple pie a lot. Plus, I don't really like pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie is my brother's favorite. I think I'm more of an apple pie person though. This or that, apple cider or pumpkin spice latte. I just feel like I'm betraying the pumpkin as I'm painting the pumpkin. I'm so sorry, but I'm gonna say apple spice. I think that like pumpkins are my favorite things in general because they remind me of the season, but like I'm more of an apple, I feel so bad saying this while I'm painting this pumpkin. Okay, I did the first layer. He's all green and done. So now let's do his hair. So this or that, pumpkin soup or pumpkin bread? Pumpkin bread for sure. Corn or butternut squash corn? Are these, is this all food? Caramel apples or candy corn cookies? Caramel apples, hands down. Candy corn is gross. It's adorable, but it's gross. Candy corn or popcorn? Well. You know my answer. And then snickerdoodles or Halloween sugar cookies. Oh, Halloween sugar cookies. It says that my mood is calm. Oh my gosh, this pumpkin smells amazing. Wow, this looks so sharp. Look at how nice this hair looks already. Amazing. Uh-oh. <laughs> Got paint flying everywhere. Look at he's coming along. <laughs> Am I really going to put that on the internet? Yes. Okay, I found better questions, because let's be real, no offense, BuzzFeed, the first kind of sucked. Okay, apple picking or hay rides? Ooh, I don't know, because I feel like hay rides are so exciting. They just make me feel alive, you know? But I'm gonna say apple picking because I can eat while I'm doing said activity, and that is always a win. Okay, bonfires or football games? So I was actually a dance team captain in high school, and I used to do all of the halftime shows for all of the football games, so I have a lot of fond memories with football in the fall. However, there's no way I'm not picking a bonfire because let me tell you, I love a good s'more. Trick or treating or pumpkin patches? Pumpkin patches, I can buy my own damn candy. I like dressing up, but honestly, I got kind of tired at like 16 and 17 of people being like, aren't you a little old for trick or treating? No. I am very excited for the eyes. I can't even tell you. I really hope this works. <laughs> okay, I've got all of the whites. I'm like nervous. I don't have anything planned out. Honestly, it's not going so well because it's not dried yet. It's okay, we can do like a couple layers. It's not looking cute right now. It's not. Well, <laughs> oh my God, how did they make the eyes look not weird? Oh my gosh, oops, I didn't mean to do that. It's fine, what am I saying? I don't care. The first layer of the eye is done. <laughs> <laughs> it looks really bad. I mean, we're getting there. I have to do another layer and then give him, yeah, it's it'll be fine. So I ended up getting a little distracted while I was painting because uh, I was having a lot of fun. Sorry. <laughs> but it's finally done, so I'm really, really excited. Please let me introduce you to Frank and Pumpkin. The cutest pumpkin in the whole world. I love him. Oh my gosh, I don't think I've ever loved a pumpkin more. He's just so cute, I love him! Well you guys, I think that is going to be the conclusion of this vlog. I had so much fun painting, so much fun reading books, so much fun baking, just like doing all of the autumn things. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you guys are having a really, really nice autumnal season, doing cozy, fun things. Until next time, you guys, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book, and I will talk to you very soon. Stay spooky!